So that's it. Boilers in, connected up, working. So in this video, we are now going to look at running all the pipe works uh, to upstairs and disconnecting all our lead pipe so we can be lead free. <laughs> right, so keep watching to see how we've uh, disconnected our lead pipes from the mains, removed the lead from upstairs in the bathroom and run all new pipe work up to the bathroom, connect it up to the bath, sink and toilet. Oh yeah, and if you're enjoying these videos, please like them, please subscribe, hit the bell notification, ding ling 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 ling, and get notified of when I upload new videos. Uh, that way, that way you'll get to see everything I do in here. You know, maybe you're not interested in installing central heating at the moment, but we have a ton of stuff to do in this house. I've got a, even once I've connected these pipes up in the bathroom, the whole bathroom has got to be stripped. It's floor to ceiling in tiles, every single wall. We're going to strip it, depending on um, depending on how much of the wall the tile takes out. We could be bonding coating it and re-skimming it, stripping the ceiling. Lots of videos. Everything to do with DIY in a house, we have to do it. So please like the videos, please subscribe, and let's get into this. Run the intro. Actually, first of all, let's show you the rest of the pipe work under the floorboards and how we've got it over here and connected to the boiler. Right, so if you remember, that is where we bought our two pipes from that radiator we put over there. So I'm not sure whether you can see right down the bottom there. We've just put an elbow on that one. And we basically brought them, brought them up, teed them in, when I replace this floorboard, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip them to the a floor joist a bit better. Um, I'd already put clips over this side. This is where the plumber has put the new gas pipe into that goes all the way down the hallway into the just to the left. That goes into the gas meter and also goes down to the front radiator. And also they go this way to the boiler. I'll show you that side. Right, so then this end, let's remove these two. So basically this is it. Yeah, so I did put some clips in here and I I put these pipes clipped to here and then I put a couple of extra lengths down to the corner where the boiler was gonna go, but they decided just to unclip them and leave them down there. So that's another thing I've just got to sort out. So there's our gas pipe comes in. Um, just basically elbowed up our two 22 mil flower return pipes and we've just brought them up and we've just ended up we've drilled three holes through the wall so we got our gas and our flow and returns yeah there's not much light under here there you can see we've got our three pipes coming through our wall and then our i've re-plumbed this in for the kitchen already uh, which i'll show in a video later probably but we've got a hot on a cold that goes through a hole in the wall and then that comes out the other side here, which we twit tea into to go upstairs into the bathroom for our hot and cold. So let's show you how we run these pipes through here, run them up and connect them into the bathroom and change all the bathroom pipes. I have filmed stuff out of sequence. So I'm trying to do this like intro part now when the stuff's already done, but it's going in a older video. Oh, sorry if this video or edit seems a bit patchy, sketchy, bitty. Let's hope this works. So all I've done is just drilled a load of holes into the wall, um, connected up some pipe clips, uh, just making sure they weren't too close together and that the pipes fit in there. With that one I've run out of 22 mil pipes, so we can't do the heating upstairs yet and that'll be in a later video. Um, all I've done is run them up. I've tried to not use a 90 degree bend there. I might have to. 
but because that is under because that's where the bath is it's going to be pretty hard access if any of these um, push fit joints fail obviously when the ceilings back on here they're going to be hard to get to although they're probably I probably will leave an access point up here because this this part is getting boxed in just to hide the pipes uh, but for now I've just left them curved run them round just put them in some clips and that is where our sink currently is there so I've just drilled some holes and pushed some pipes up through there so what we'll do first we'll turn off the um, mains water uh, we'll open up our hot tap so our um, hot water cylinder upstairs empties our hot water tank and then um, we can look at seeing if the our flexi connections will fit on the old taps up in the bathroom and obviously if they do well then cut into these pipes and try and connect everything up let's see how it goes and the most important thing before you turn the water off for a long time get the kettle filled up all right firstly turn off our mains water at the stop top stop tap stop cup whatever they call it double check that your mains is off that's the cold tap and now we need to turn our hot on to empty our tank upstairs and we'll run our hot tap in the bath as well empties it out quicker not that much quicker <laughs> that's the trouble with the pressure when your hot water tanks just above the bath and the cylinder just in there That'll do. That's empty. Now there's only going to be minimal water left in the pipes. So now lift our floorboards up, get on with connecting the pipes. Actually, we'll go upstairs first and see. We'll take our um, we'll take the leg connections off of the bathroom taps and see if our flexi pipes fit the screw threads. See if we can get these undone. Don't be so hard on me. Don't be so hard. Don't be so hard. Can I stay in the darkness? Yeah, and we're out. And now, let's just see. These will fit on there. Yes, they do. That's good. Now we know they connect up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this sink because it's still got the lead waste. It's not even attached. It's not even attached to the wall in any way. It's not attached to the floor, not attached to the wall. So let's get rid of this. Yeah, and that waste pipe is completely blocked. Yeah, so there we go, that's why that's why there was nothing going down there and it's also leaking. Right, so now that's all disconnected. What we'll do, we'll take the side panel off the bath, try and get to the bath taps and also try and get to the um, water inlet on the toilet. As long as we can get them connected up, that'll be fine. And then we can rip all this out, sort out our waste pipe later on. I am drawn to the light. I want to rest in the arms of an angel and be saved. Now we're going to this disgusting place.
Right, so now we got those undone under there. What I'm just going to do now, before it gets too dark outside, because it gets dark very early now, we're going to go under the floorboards uh, by the front where the main comes in, and we're going to just disconnect our lead pipe from there. All right, come here, talk John, we're going to see what we're doing. So, so this is our, our lead lock that we put onto our lead pipe to connect our plastic, our new PVC pipe. And then over there, all we did was just to put a, a T piece in. So now we can just, so now we just need to take this T piece off, uh, replace it just with a straight connector. Right, so all these push fit fittings are, you can safely disconnect them and reuse them. So what we can use, we can just use a clip push that on there and there's a little plastic bit on the end here you can see what you need to do is push that in and what that does is push the the plastic uh, collet in which pushes in the um, the metal part which has the teeth on there so we should just be able to push with that and slide out but if you can't because there's not much on the side of here to push with you just get a spanner, adjust it to the uh, adjust it to the size of the pipe. Gives you a bit more leverage to push down on it. So it should be able to push on there and slide out our pipe. So now with these push fix fittings, you just make sure these are done up first. Make sure your edges are clean, and then you just push them until they slip in. Just try with our wrench around here this time. So we just push down on the collet, at the same time pulling the pipe. And now she comes. You can also, you can actually undo these and take the whole thing apart. So if you can't slide it off, you can just undo it. And then you've got to either use a new one or make sure you put all the bits inside back properly. Make sure that side's done up, they're all done up tight. So now she'll just be able to push that back in. That's it, that's in, that's connected. And that's it, our lead. Our lead is now disconnected. Also, now what we're gonna do, this is the switch for our heater upstairs. So what we're gonna do now, is just pop this out and take the fuse out of it. And now we can just push this back in, into place, keep it safe. Now we can't turn our boiler on because we now have no water going up to our boiler up there because the lead is no longer connected. We do not want that boiler to turn on, it'll just burn everything out. So, but just make sure you disconnect this, so there's no way it can be turned on. All right, we're just gonna run back upstairs and make our holes for our pipes. Our other hole, so we've just got a 20 mil spade bit on the end of our drill. Let's run upstairs. Remember, you can see in there, it's getting dark, but that's where our water pipe comes in and connects. So we're gonna just drill a hole straight down under there. piece three inserts because we're going to need we cut that pipe in half we're going to do three inserts one for either side of there and one for our pipe going upstairs this is the one we need to cut we're going to cut it pretty much sort of in line with our pipe coming down the wall there you go 
we'll get our pipe insert for that one. So our T-piece onto that one. Our pipe insert into that one. Bring this up. Um, so let's take our cold feed that's going upstairs. Measure it down to our pipe with a little bit extra. Yeah, see, yeah. Let's leave this. Let's leave this quite a bit longer so I can rearrange it. Let's make sure. Make sure all our clips are done up. Babe, don't be so hard on me. Don't be so hard. Right, so there we go. This one's already got a pipe insert on it which we definitely need for this one because this time we have a we have a compression fitting um, you got the arrow on there tells you which way the water flows but it makes sense anyway because that's your tap connector and that's your 15 mil compression so just make sure you push that all the way on just like any you know push fit fitting just make sure that's all the way down and then we'll just Nip this up, make sure the pipe stays in place. And then you need you even need some other grips, you really need two for this. We like to use the monkey grips or whatever you call them. So you can lock them around there, lock them around the top. And then use your other spanner, use your adjustable to tie it up. Now you've got to be careful because these are plastic. I don't want to over tighten them. I want it to seal, but I don't want to squash the plastic too much. So you kind of want to get it. It's like a yeah, it's like a feeling you get used used to it after a while. Although I haven't because I ain't been doing it long. But you don't want to do it as tight as tight as you can. You know you don't want to grip it and go. Urgh. It's the same with copper pipe. If you over tighten a copper pipe, you can sometimes hear it start squeaking. When you hear it squeaking, you've probably gone too tight. Right, so let's start off with getting the, uh, the bath connectors on. So we've got a 15 mil to three quarter inch for our bath, because the connectors under there are a bit bigger. So compression fit in one end. Just got a off cut pipe. This should be long enough just to go down from the floor, connect these up, so. But you know what I'm going to do first? What I'm going to do first is go and get my angle grinder and cut up some of these lead pipes so we can just get them out of the way. Looks like there's a little plug on there, obviously for unblocking it, but it's blocked with all that, and basically that piece of lead has totally come away from there. That is disgusting. They've gone and bought some isolation valves. I'm just going to do these the same way. Make sure parts all the way in. It's not too tight. When the night comes crawling and I'm all alone, I head for the highway, baby, to please my restless bone, my restless bone. Just gonna turn the mains water on a little bit and check. 
the leaks everywhere, probably. <laughs> Keep an eye on that for me. So you tap some of the little bits, you can just check. Make sure there's nothing pouring out or leaking. Doesn't look like there's any drips or anything on that one down there. So that's good. Those ones look fine. You can't see anything dripping through from the bath yet. So let's go and check the bath. Alright, do not want to see or feel any water under here. Alright. That's good, we've got no, nothing coming out of our compression fittings at the bottom. Alright, so we can turn our isolation valves on. <laughs> Let's fill up here. Nope, the hot's fine, there's no dribbles or anything. Here comes the cold. Yep, bone dry up there. So, success. We have a running bath. Old Victorian taps. There we go, lovely hot, hot water from our boiler. And the uh, hot tap we did for the sink there, that's not leaking the all. So, that's all good as well. So tomorrow we'll finish connecting the waste up, get this sink out of the bath and clean it up. And now I'm just going to tidy down on this, I'm going to have a nice hot bath tonight. Now thanks for watching this messy old episode and I'll see you next time hopefully when we repair that brick and finish this waste off. So see you soon. <laughs>